rearranging my workshop to make it more efficient. An extension to the workbench and a selection of very useful Proxon tools. I bought this very good quality red folding table many years ago and in the old workshop it was next to the workbench and I had some metal boxes on top of it full of metal bar stock which were very heavy. So it's a very strong table, much stronger than it looks. For the last 18 months it's been languishing in my garage next to the traction engine for no specific reason, just for putting junk on. In this video to start with I'm going to erect the table. I brought it out of the garage through the snow and just in case you don't believe me that is snow on the front of my shoes. I used to have two of these tables, one was black and this one's red. I don't know what happened to the black one. The hardest thing is turning the table over once the legs are pulled out and locked. But eventually, with not much fiddling about, I got there, and here it is in the workshop. As I never cleaned this when I brought it from the old workshop, it was very dirty, so I thought I would treat it to a clean. I'm using some gun wash, which is cellulose thinners used for cleaning spray guns. The arrangement of a workshop, in my opinion, should be something like a kitchen. Generally speaking, one person works in the kitchen, and ideally, everything that you need to use should be very close to hand. Originally when I built my workshop I had the bench exactly in the centre but then I needed to bring my traction engine into the workshop so I had to move the bench over to one side. As the traction engine now lives in the garage I thought now was definitely the time to increase my workspace. On the workbench under the black cover is a traction engine that I renovated a while back and it's still there because we're in lockdown and the customer is reluctant to make the long drive to come and collect it and quite rightly too. I also have other models in the workshop that really need to be reunited with their owners. I thought this was an ideal time to show you some of the Proxon tools that I use, and I've just bought a new one. And before I start, this is not product placement. Every one of these Proxon motor tools was bought by me with my money from RDG Tools. This is the most excellent angle grinder, and it's powered by a rechargeable battery, which is very convenient. And similarly, this is an electric drill, also powered by a rechargeable battery. The next tool that I'm going to show you is so long overdue in my life, I don't know why I haven't bought one before. It's very similar to the angle grinder, but it doesn't have the fancy end on it. But it will allow me to drill holes at right angles to the tool. And this is the unboxing of the tool. Even Proxon boxes are very good quality too. There's very little in the box really for the size of it. The tool itself a collection of collets, and some literature. In common with the rest of the Proxon tools that I own, I bought this one from RDG Tools. And on the 10th of February 2021, it was £100. I don't normally mention prices, but I thought I would in this case. And I do not think that £100 is expensive for a tool of this quality. Maybe I would have preferred it if this one had been battery operated, but I have found a problem with the battery operated ones. The battery's duration on these tools is surprisingly long, but then one day as you use it, it just stops working, the battery's flat. As this right angle drill is mains powered, I won't have that problem unless we get a power cut. The tool is fitted with a collet, and you get a few collets to go with it. And this is okay, but I prefer to fit a drill chuck. You press the button to lock the shaft, and then you can unscrew the chuck. It's a very simple and quick job, changing collets, but it's just time that I don't want to waste doing. The spare collets live in a small holder, so they're not exactly difficult to get at. But as I will be mainly using this tool for drilling in confined spaces, I'm going to swap over the collet chuck for a drill chuck. And in this clip, I'm fitting the collet from the right angle drill into this motor tool, because the application that I'm going to use this particular one for just needs to take these wire brushes or similar tools and they're all the same shaft diameter. Here I'm fitting the drill type chuck to the right angle drill. And this will now take drill bits of one eighth of an inch downwards. The Proxon motor tool that I fitted the collet chuck to is going to permanently live in this holder. And again it's a very good quality Proxon holder, very cleverly designed. Because of the ball and clamp arrangement you can move the tool to any position you want really, to suit the job that you're doing. This one uses its own power supply. This assembly is clamped to the corner of the bench, an ideal position. 
and provided I don't leave a wire brush stuck up, it can just stay in this position permanently. In the box with the right angle drill was a little catalogue, showing a selection of what is available in the range of these superb motor tools. I like the look of the detail sander at the top, and there's also a jigsaw, and then of course there are all the accessories like drill stands etc. I also have a small Proxon milling machine, and I bought this second hand from a friend of mine. It has its uses, but I don't use it very much, but I use these tools all the time. One job I'll have to do very shortly is clean up the side tanks and cab assembly for the simplex. I bought the nitro mods to get rid of the rest of the paint, but it's too cold outside to use the hose pipe to wash away all of the paint stripper. This next clip shows how useful these tools are. I'm using one of the cup type wire brushes, and it's very useful for removing the paint around the rivets and the soldered on half round beading. And here I'm showing the right angle tool in action. When it's fitted with one of these type of wire brushes, it's quite good for doing this sort of thing. It gets into places where other tools will not reach. So there you have it, my collection of Proxon motor tools on the bench which has been extended. Should I need to bring my large traction engine back into the workshop, I can take the table down very quickly to accommodate it. Today the ceramic heat insulation and the cladding arrived in a large cardboard box from Blackgate's Engineering. I was starting to get concerned about the lack of space, but now I have the extension to the bench, I'll be able to show the cladding process of the simplex boiler quite easily now that I have the bench space available. And that concludes the workbench extension and Proxon feature. So stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.